Um, thanks very much for that introduction, Camilla. I'm glad the footstool has gone because uh, streeting looks down nose at GPs is not the headline that I was looking for this morning. Um, can I just begin by saying um, a public thank you to you, Camilla, and by extension to your college. Uh, in opposition, we engaged in good-natured but often robust debate about things we disagreed on, but more often than not found ourselves in violent agreement on the state of general practice today and our responsibility to rebuild general practice for a brighter tomorrow. And that relationship built on mutual respect and a spirit of partnership means I come here today feeling that not only am I among friends, but among teammates, which is a theme I will build on in my speech this morning. And so in that same spirit, can I also say a special thank you to Sunaina, Paula, Rumshia, and Andy for those uh, outstanding presentations, um, because you are proof that while the NHS may be in the grips of the worst crisis in its history, the biggest asset we have are the people who work in it. And more than that, you provide hope to a country that is desperately looking for it, because you are showing us not only is reform possible, it is already happening, and you are showing us what a reformed NHS could look like. Time, I respect your profession and your expertise. General practice is a specialism. That's why I'm committed to the creation of a single register of GPs and specialist doctors, and this government will legislate to give the GMC the power to do it. It's... It's symbolic, but it's also meaningful. It reflects the partnership I want to build with this profession. What I need from you in return is goodwill and the same team spirit. When the BMA's GPC returned their ballot result on collective action, I wasn't remotely surprised. I know that after years of rising pressures, declining resources, and a worsening service of patients, you feel it's your duty to sound the alarm. And trust me, you weren't the only ones who wanted to punish the previous government. But the Conservatives got the kicking they well and truly deserved on the 4th of July. Capping appointments now will only punish patients and make the road to recovery steeper. So be in no doubt, it is shutting the door on patients. Their care will suffer, receptionists will bear the brunt of their frustration, and the rest of the NHS will be left to pick up the pieces. Worse still, our collective job will be made harder. Collective action really means collective failure. Your message has been received, not from this one vote, but from all the time I've spent in general practice in the past three years, literally looking over GP shoulders and seeing what you deal with and the state of the crisis for myself. There's a reason that back in July, I rejected the list of hospitals suggested for me to visit on my first visit as Secretary of State and went instead to Dr. Ellie Cannon's Abbey Medical Center in North London. I wanted to send a message that I understand how bad things are and that I'm determined to fix them. But I can't do this alone. We can only do this together. So I'm asking GPs to stand down collective action and instead work with this new government that is serious about working with you to rebuild our NHS together. There are some tricky issues that we'll need to navigate together. Take data. It's the future of the NHS. Advances in genomics and data mean the NHS will be able to do things never before possible.